A common problem when doing UI automation is how to take information from a data source which will only exist while the automation is running, such as an Excel spreadsheet, and choose which elements of the application to interact with. For example, today I want to update the industry of the company specified in this particular spreadsheet here in the supplier's website. And I don't always know what that's going to be. That's going to change each time the automation runs. Fortunately, this is now possible starting in UiPath Studio X 20.8, which was our August update shipped in 2020. So any 20.8 and all future versions will have this capability. Let's get started. It's a little bit complicated, but I'm going to walk you through how to do it. I already have my automation set up here. So I have the browser activity use browser. Uh, the refresh is just here. It's a little trick that if I leave the application in a weird state, it'll automatically reset it because every time I refresh this application, it resets to its natural state. And I have the for each Excel row that's going to go through each row in this scratch pad sheet of the project's associated notebook file. All right. So every container activity, meaning activities that can contain other activities, such as use application browser, Forge Excel row, have this little gear icon that let me do value mappings so I can make values available to my UI automation activities. Uh, in this case, however, the value of the current row that I need to map in doesn't exist until I'm inside the drop activity here. So to do this, I'm going to add a group activity which is just a great way to organize logically related things. And also in this case, it gives me a container to do the value mapping at. So I'm gonna add a value mapping and I need to create a variable for the purpose of this. And we're gonna call this company. So this is gonna be the name of the company that I wanna interact with. And now I'm gonna say, I wanna map it to the current row external name value. So this will be how I refer to it in my UI automation activities. I'm gonna click okay. So once I've done that, I'm gonna add a click. I could use hover, uh, but if you look at the website, you'll notice that I have to hover over a particular element in order for this little edit thing to show up. So I can pick any element here. We'll choose the first one, the secure VPN provider. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the settings icon. It's gonna open the selector editor. And anywhere it's picked text, which in this particular case was secure VPN provider, I'm gonna put the name of my variable, which I called company, inside of double curly braces. And what this is gonna do is it's going to tell the UI automation to get the value from this company variable at runtime. I then want to uncheck the image automation selector so it shouldn't fall back to look for something that looks like secure VPN provider since this is gonna be different every time. And I'm gonna go ahead and click confirm. It's going to warn me that it can't confirm that I did the right thing. That's okay. And we'll go ahead with that. Once I've clicked on that to get the edit icon to show up on the appropriate element, I now need to add, it won't really matter, I want to say find the little pencil and click that. And it's going to ask me to identify an anchor to make it more accurate. So I want to find the trash can that's associated with that as the anchor. And I'm going to click confirm there. All right, once I've done this, if that works as I expect, it should go through. For each one, it should click and open those icons. The next thing I need to do, and I've just separated them out from the group, as I mentioned that they're a great way of logically organizing things, is once I open this, I now need to interact with this industry dropdown. The problem with this industry dropdown is it's not a real dropdown, and if I try to use the select item uh, activity, I'm gonna get an error here. So it's gonna say the indicated target is not a valid UI element for select item. That's because this website does some tricks and while it looks like a drop down to us, as far as a computer can tell, it's actually not and the website draws it when you click it. So we'll add another group activity here just to keep things nice and organized. I could have put them in the same group, that's fine. And now I want to do another value mapping. And here I want to call this the industry. And I need to map in the value of the industry that I want to work with. So current row, industry. Okay. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a click. And here I want to click on this drop down to get it to open. And if I want to be really good, I can click this. That's exactly what I need to click. I'll anchor it off of the industry. Perfect. Let's go ahead and click confirm. All right, now this is where I'm going to use the dynamic value once that pops up to choose which one I'm going to select. So I need to pause recording mode here for a second. I'll change it to only pause for two seconds. I'll hit F2. This lets me click on it so it opens. All right now I'm going to click on banking. Doesn't matter which one again because we're going to change this. I want to delete the anchor in this particular case. And I want to go to my settings. And just like I did before, anywhere where it says banking, I want to say industry. And let's replace that and that. Let's go ahead and get rid of the image automation. Click confirm. It'll warn me that this will only exist at runtime. And then the final thing that we need to do it could be in a group or not in a group, but I like the organization of having only my mapped things inside the group, is I need to click on the save button to save our updates. And we'll anchor that off of cancel and we'll go ahead and confirm that. All right, so let's run this and see if it updates the industries as we expect. So it'll start by refreshing it, which will close all of this, which is why I added that activity. I can see the industry pop up, change. You can see this one pop up, industry, change, done. And if I go look at the website, I should see that these match now. So I can see that inner power group has indeed been changed to communication and modern metal has been changed to engineering. So that is how to use dynamic values in UI automation starting in UiPath Studio X version 20.8.